And here, this is the average act attendance. So you're seeing here, 15,000 in average attendance, that's probably the one to realistically. It wasn't until about 1920 that the data starts getting a little bit, bit more filled in. And even there, there's still gaps. It's right around 1950 where you start getting a more complete record. By the time you get to 1950, you have about 80% of the box scores that have actually been digitized and turned in and broken down into play-by-play -play data. You see some general trends. You see things are kind of slow. They build up a little bit in the 20s with a lot of the ball with Babe Ruth, with the advent of radio and a little bit more advertising in the game. You see how it's an obvious trend during the Great Depression. You see a little bit of an uptick in World War II, uh, and then especially after World War II, you'll see in the 50s it starts to die again. Then you start seeing a slow, gradual rise. Some of this is built by expansion. Some of this is built by the baby boom generation getting, getting uh, aging into the prime baseball and watching here. Then you'll see almost what appears to be an explosion that coincides with uh, the general basically the aging of people like me, I'm at the tail end of the baby boom. So I would have been entering my prime baseball watching years right around here. We had a general economic expansion in the United States for around 1982 to 2007. I've written about this three different times. And I'd say, hey, what's the state of baseball? And guess what? I come up with three different answers every year. So this is just the general trend. But that's not where we stop. That's where I start. Let's break it down by the three clubs that we're talking about here in this room. We're going to start with the clubs. They are my team. They are the team I started watching on WGN on Sundays at Davenport, Iowa. Uh, so I can watch Ernie Banks, Ron Samuel, Billy Williams, and Curry and Jason, and I can watch them not win playoff games. It was truly a joy. Now, as you look at this chart, bars that are in red, those are years they made the playoffs. So I don't distinguish between playoffs and World Series. In the Cubs case, it's pretty easy. There is nothing, no World Series after this bar anyway. So you look at basic Cubs attendance, not too bad in the 20s, about 20,000 or so. Obviously, we've got some gaps in the data here. Same general pattern. By the time you get to the 50s and the early 60s, you've got some pretty egregious teams being put out there. You've got a ballpark that is not really in the best part of town at that point. I read that in big hair plastic grass. Greatly built. It's not the really built that it is today. You see an uptick in the late 60s and 70s when they got good for a brief period and goes back down. This is 1984. That was the year I first moved to Chicago. I picked the wrong year to try to move to a Cubs game. Their attendance went from here to here in the space of the year. But even so, a playoff year. A year and the Cubs win the playoffs for the first time in 40 years. They're still only averaging about 25,000 people a game. And then you'll see the gradual rise. I want you to remember this part right here. I'm going to come back to it. This is the peak. This is essentially full capacity for Wrigley Field, just over 40,000 people. And you can see the decline afterward until the glorious year of 2015. This is just for fun. Uh, every now and then I play a mental exercise where I want to turn baseball into a 140 game season instead of 162. And so to do that, I would probably institute doubleheaders again on Sunday. I would probably eliminate Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday games. And I'd probably also downside 16. But um, I've never really taken that all the way through. But you can see, there's a real shocker, you know. Attendance is much better on the weekends than it is during the week. But even here in 2015, weekday attendance is pretty strong. This is where I got a conceptual breakthrough earlier this year. Yep. When I try to present data, what I'm trying my very hardest to do is to get out one picture of something that makes sense. Occasionally, I even succeed in doing that. And so what I did was I had always applied capacity, and I got these capacities from steam heads. And so I had always applied capacity against attendance, but I never been able to get it to line up with clean. And so here, you can actually see it. Okay. 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 bed an essentially capital stadium at best for, come on, we're talking for 60 years Thank now. You. Now, all of a sudden, it starts getting filled, and now you start seeing 
And so um, you start seeing some holes right there. And this hole is what I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about. 2008 attendance, like I said, 40,000 change. That was the last year they made the playoffs. <coughs> By the time 2013 rolled around, they were down to 32,000 in attendance. I kept on hearing on sports talk radio, oh, the Cubs go out and they just sell out every day. Well, not by 2013 they did. Now they're down to 32,000. They're down 8,000 a game. Do the math. No, don't wait. I did it for you. <laughs> so, assume the average fan spends 50 bucks a day at a game. That's just a number I threw out. Thank you. Thank you. That means they're losing about 30, over $30 million a year in lost revenue from this number to this number. Over a five-year span, that'd be about $165 million. If you want to look at 100 bucks a fan, which is probably on the high side, but you never know, now you're looking at $300 million. So what you say? April 1st, 2014, Tom Rickett says, I'm looking for a minority investor. I'm looking for a minority investor who's willing to put in around $300 million. What a coincidence. Where do these numbers come from? And so I saw that, and so I sent a, an email <coughs> to a reporter, and I asked a couple questions, and that reporter essentially said I was right in my assumptions. And then, if you think about what the Ricketts did, when the Ricketts bought the Cubs in 2009, Tom Ricketts sold it as a cash cow. Hey, we'll always have this money. Well, when he started having had revenue holes of 300 million, you gotta find it someplace else. White Sox, slightly different story here. <laughs> I'll show you, I'll show you Cubs versus White Sox attendance in a little bit. 1920, that's a pretty good year, up until about October. And things didn't go so well. I mean, in 1920, you're coming off a World Series. You've got a team that was playing pretty well. They were competitive until the very end of the season. And then, obviously, the scandal hit, and, it, and they took a big, huge attendance in. I mean, they lost a big 25, 30% of their attendance just right there. They would occasionally come back. But you've got a long drought here of not making the playoffs. They hit the World Series in 1959. They hit the halo effect in 1960, and then they kind of lose it almost immediately. This becomes a recurrent trend for the White Sox. I don't have any answer for it. All I know is that people do respond to winning. They won in 83, people showed up. They came out in 84, and they disappeared almost as quickly afterward. They won in 93, part of that wasn't their fault got the strike next year that they probably would have made the playoffs that next year if the strike had occurred anyway. And so you see the drop off there. They won in 2000, they dropped off, they won in 2000. Now they see, even here, after winning the World Series, you had a very nice peak, a very nice peak, and yet it continues to go on down. And granted, when you're playing, you know, when you're playing like a 500 ball for two or three seasons, you're going to find, other than about five or six teams in baseball, team fans are going to respond in the negative way. They're going to stop showing up. Their attendance by day. Yeah. Not bad, but still. I mean, there's some beautiful Sundays. I'd watch a Sox game with the Cubs would be on them for whatever reason, or maybe it was a night game. And I would see half-filled uh, U.S. Cellular on a beautiful day. And I'm thinking, you can park there. The food there is wonderful. The price is cheap. You can pick up tickets on the secondary market for next to nothing. And yet, they were lucky to get maybe $25,000 in the same. I, I, don't, I don't pretend to understand why. This is their percent of capacity. Old Comiskey with a big old park. I was never in there. I assume it was pretty roomy. And I assume that was probably not a very fun place to play 8,000 people a game when you got room for 50,000. That sounds like the old Cleveland Stadium, you know, where they had a stadium for like 70,000 people and they bring in like 8,000 people. That's like, well, it's got to be like a game that the Sox played against Baltimore last year where there were zero people in the stadium. But here at least there was some. But you can see, for the most part, 
they're not reaching their capacity. They come close to a couple of years. But generally speaking, you know, they're only, you know, for last year, they only were just over half their capacity. The Milwaukee Brewers. <laughs> I started out with the Seattle Pilots in 1969, didn't draw that many people. Decided, let's go to the friendlier shores of Milwaukee and we'll get an attendance club. Most of you are eating right now. Do not get your phones out and look at the 1970 lineup for the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm telling you, do not do that, you will get sick. They had Tommy Harper on that team. Other than that, ooh, I mean, I, I go, I'm going for seven blocks to fill the room. I'm looking at these names. I'm going, who? What? Huh? So, bad team. Bad team. By the time you get to the uh, playoff teams in the 80s, you can see there's a nice increase. I lived in Wisconsin from 1985 to 1988. Described the Milwaukee uh, Sentinel. Got the journal on Sundays. So I would read, it was, what season was it they won for the year row? That is seven. You know, so that's why I kept on reading that George Webb, Maya, everybody in here, who went 13 games in the world. So you see, there's very much response there. You can see the clear opening in the middle part right here. And you can see how they responded very well. What I really like here, you're going to see this again in a second, that you couldn't use them. They actually, they're, so we're looking at 32, 33,000 in the park that seats about 40,000. And they, for the most part, maintain that. Miller Park is a wonderful park. My daughter went to school a couple of, about 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. We went to a couple of brewers' games. I mean, I had a blast there. I sat um, in the lower level on uh, the right field, and I sat in the 500 level. I love those teams. They were great. Made 12 bucks the second time, and I walked out with a 20 plus foul at the boot. So, I, that was a great day. Their attendance by day. My daughter still will have that. I did. It's a brewer's uh, uh, schedule. I'll get with the bobbleheads in there. Okay, so she will know what bobbleheads are when and she will probably be going on those days. She goes for the bobblehead days. But, you know, your typical, your typical say, and you show up on the weekends, and weekdays, it's going to be a little bit less. Now, is there a percent of capacity, like I was saying before? Not too shabby. No one's 75% of the building. You can't really do much better than that. I mean, at that point, you're almost at, at, at peak capacity. You're, you're going to have prop, uh, parking issues. Although, we went to a game in 2011, July 31st. It was a sell of 40,000 people. Um, we left where we were going, and I said, man, it's going to take us to the park. And it took us 20 minutes to get in and 10 minutes to get out. It was sweet. I mean, I just want to call out. I like this place a lot. You know, now that I know I can park here, it's great. I've been glossing over this. And I'm going to come back to this in a little bit. But you can really only get people to show up if they live in the area. I heard Frank Kenny say a long time ago that 40% of Cubs fans are from out of town. I want you to think about the ramifications of that. In a 40,000 person stadium, that means about 15,000 are coming from out of town. If you can get 50 on a bus, that means there's going to be 300 buses outside of Wrigley Field for every game. I don't think there's 300 buses. There's a lot, but I don't think there's 300. You can't draw very well outside of your major metropolitan area. And so what I grabbed on here was how well teams actually did with regard to their major metro area. Hey, look who's on top. This is Milwaukee Brewers. They drew over 160% of the metropolitan area. I think I have a metro population here about 1.8 million, give or take. Brewers pulled in about 2.5 million. Not any packs, great. That's followed by the Royals, followed by the best fans in baseball. And you'll see this is basically skewed towards smaller markets because you know, they're going to have a smaller denominator. If you look down at the bottom, you're going to see the New Yorks and the Chicago's and that. But I think this is a testament to the Brewers fans that we've been seeing in the attendance really since 2008. But Ned Ghost, if you, uh, well, almost in the minute, really got fired. But, you know, when the, the people, yeah. they're, they're still there. It's still a good team to watch. It's still fun to watch. What about the roof? Pardon? What about the roof? Doesn't that go into that? Yeah, I mean, I don't have to worry about it. We're not going to worry about it. It's cold. 
I see some socks being with his Cubs and socks. This has not always been Cubs town. There have been times when the socks grew greater, sometimes significantly greater than the Cubs. Even as recently as the early 90s, it's not great. This is despite the opening of uh, New Comiskey. But you also had two very good teams, thank you, by Frank Thomas, Jack McDowell, Robin Ventura, and all those things like that. What you see is a gradual buildup of Cubs, uh, which is the blue, and what you see are pretty rapid ups and downs. The White Sox attendance is far more responsive for whatever reason. If they're not winning, they're not showing up, they're, that halo effect lasts maybe a year. The Cubs' halo effect lasts until we win the pennant next. <laughs> so, uh, I'm 53, I think I, I'm high school. Hey, question. First, do you think part of that is because Baseball fans all over the country have on the bucket list very good field, so yes. this, this they, so does that help them? Or? That's a big part of it. The other big part of it is being on WGN nationwide for 30 years. How do you not, how do you, I mean. Well, that's changing. Oh, well, it's already changed. Yeah. Well, I've got another no question. It's still so hard around a nationwide network. Yeah. Don't you think, though, that the neighborhood where the Sox play has a lot to do with people not blocking there all the time. Well, that's not accurate. It's not even close to the We had a Sabre meeting there. It's a beautiful reputation. Uh, the perception is there. I don't, just, I don't dispute the perception. You're right about that. But there's no, but I don't know. I mean, the only reason you can think that is if you've never even been close to Out of town, that perception. I'm sure they do. You know, you think Southside, you're only, you know, um, at what space in your graph is 1988, which is when the Cubs put in lights? And um, that would be right in here. <laughs> Probably right here. This is, I'm going to assume, the 89 the playoffs. That couldn't hurt. You're going to have better attendance at Hank Williams to get I can't easily break that out. Um, yeah, because the White Sox had, had lights, so they were able to attract. Yeah, I'm, and right now, they're, uh, I, I was surprised last year. I'm watching the games and living out of the Chicago area. I'm from Davenport, Iowa. Let me tell you, it only takes me, I could usually run the Cubs game within a half hour, you know, between the five different stations I had to do. <coughs> but um, I was shocked at the number of night games that were last year until I realized they have 43 this year. There are 43 night games we're going to have right now, and I think, and either that's what we're going to, or that's what we're going to be at by next year. Up from the 30 when it started. So they're increasing the number of night games. Every night game is going to be that much more of a fall. Well, you know, one of the other things with your capacity issue there, if I remember right as a kid, the Cubs used to advertise almost 22,005 tickets on sale the day of the game. Yeah, they used to have a great walk up. And same thing with the Brewers. Many people in the old county stadium days, you would walk up, they had 20 ticket windows, I think, right there, parallel to the first It's probably so every baseball park. Yeah, they were all lined up, where now it's so much on the season tickets. Well, now it is because uh, a lot of it is already been sold. I mean, when you look at this gen, I mean, if I were to show you the Yankees, and I could if you wanted to, even the Yankees in the 50s were drawing 15,000, 20,000 people. When you can't get people in the major <laughs> metropolitan area to come see Mano and Avera and Whitey Ford, they're going to come see the Sox in the mid 50s? I mean, before they got good? I mean, it, 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 it's a bit of a. It, it, I, I can understand it. But, now, do you think that attendance is going to be affected because of the high ticket prices? At a certain point, you're ahead of me a little bit. You're ahead of me a little bit because I used to go out. I'll give you a quick answer to that. I definitely would be able to do that. I'll admit that by saying, I don't see how I can. I'll let you say that. This is where I started asking questions and asking. I look at this right here, I go, man, look at that nice little one up. Man, baseball's going okay. All right, we've had a rough economy these last couple of years, but I bet it can come back. And then I plot it against the major metropolitan 
areas, basically at the 28, 27, whatever metro areas we have, because we got two teams in New York, San Francisco, LA, and Chicago. So 26 metropolitan areas. And I see something pretty flat. So what I'm seeing this is being driven in large part by population increase, by the fact that we're no longer the nation of 150 million that we were in 1950, but of 325 million in 2015. That number is relatively flat. Now, when I made, when I came up with this, like I said, that was a pretty major breakthrough for me. I saw something that I thought I was illustrating pretty clearly that I had not been able to illustrate very clearly before. And so I was able to make some points I didn't think I could make. I don't like to brag, but I don't let it stop me. So every now and then, so I had, Dan Hirsch writes for Sporting News, and he had seen me put out one of these charts regarding the team. And so he says, hey, can you give me a little bit more information? So I did. And so that was seen by somebody else that follows me. And I think on this day, appropriately enough, you know, like I said, I don't like to brag, but sometimes I do get humble, you know, because every now and then you get shown appreciation by somebody, and they tell you that what you've done is pretty good work, and I'm going to go ahead and take it apart, you know. So it means a lot to me that he follows me in the first place, but I really don't know why he does. But, you know, I, I just, every now and then, when you see appreciation for your work, I, I, it does make me feel good. I'm going to finish up with some general things that will address your questions in general ways. Like I said, I'm 53. You know what baseball does every time I turn on the TV? It says, thank you, Scott. You dropped the average viewing age by turning on your TV. The average viewing age for the World Series, this came out of the Wall Street Journal in 2013, was 54 years old. That's the average. So you know there's going to be a lot on the higher side, but not much on the floor. I love the title of this. Hey, we're younger than the golf. You know, there's your marching track right there. NHL, not even a bit. NHL is younger than football, which I find surprising. And then you see baseball sitting here pushing close to 55. You know, they're still happy with me. I've got another couple of years before they tell me I, don't, I can't watch anymore, so I'm going to try another thing in the wrong direction. You look at social media. I was bored one Sunday in 2013. I said, how many followers do each of the major league teams have? So I started tracking that. So what I have here, these are all the billions. Major League Baseball is, yeah, it's Facebook. These are Facebook followers, sorry that I just put it on the screen. Major League Baseball had 30, 37 million Facebook followers in June of 2013. I just checked these numbers again. It's now up to about 16 million followers on Facebook. Twitter is more. Twitter, usually, there's pretty strong Facebook has five or ten times the reach to Twitter. Except for when we were at the out of the box store, we had about eight times the reach on Twitter than we did on Facebook. So if you look here, baseball, let's go to Facebook. 62 million followers. Soccer, the next great sport. Yeah, it's got nine million followers on Facebook. NBA, 165 million, almost 165 million. NFL, over 100 million. Even hockey isn't that far behind Facebook, behind Major League Baseball on Facebook. Where is social media? It's with the young people. Us oldsters in here, we don't really use the social media as much unless we don't put up that pictures of our cats and dogs. But the young people live on here, and to me, this is a marker that we're losing the younger generation a little bit. Why is the NBA so out of the way? Where do the greatest NFL? I'm going to assume that is intentional. I'm going to assume some of it has to be some kind of outreach. I don't have to do an answer for that. I, I, think, I think they probably uh, put an effort into their social media, much more so than they are. You can't have that kind of disparity without intent, without somebody, without putting resources behind it, putting out every dunk, every steal, every tirade or whatever like that. Major League Baseball tries. But I mean, half the time, I'll see this, you know, Joey Bash with the bat flip. One of the most awesome things I've seen in a long time. I cried when I saw that bat flip. I was laughing so hard. And so, uh, but it took three 
His name is Darren Wilden. Do you know what Darren Wilden's job is? Darren is so much less awesome. There you go. Darren Wilden is taking over Stat Cash for Major League Baseball Advanced Media. He will be the first in charge of the visualizations. Darren and I talk a lot. I, I, what I love about this is talk, this is Darren playing, and what you can't see is breaking the bat as in the process of getting the type of insurance. You're going to start seeing the stat cast game, and what Darren's going to try to do is humanize it. If you've ever been to a site, uh, baseball savant, you also have NBA savant, NFL savant, that's where you can get pitch up next data from him, and uh, you can do all sorts of interesting things, buy them all sorts of interesting things, and you can buy them all. The best person you want to follow on Twitter is sitting right there, Mr. Christopher Kamka. Not just for Chicago sports, he has really interesting Chicago things, but he branches out every now and too. His knowledge of history is outstanding. His, he makes things really interesting. If you're not following him, you need to start following him right now. These people will make you smarter about baseball. You may tear your hair out of them now and then, but hey, you know, there's no promises in this world. With that, I'm happy to take any other questions or if I can turn it up, I'll be able to sit down. Go right ahead. Can you make this PowerPoint available for us? Because I'm not going to remember any of those names. Yeah. That'll be, it'll, 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 it'll be, uh, I'll be on the video, on the video and uh, there'll be a link from, from the Chicago chapter site. Okay. okay. I'll go ahead and tweet you. I, I tweeted out that slide a couple minutes ago. I'll tweet it to you later. All right. And, and, and you can put it on the website. If you want. All right. Um, what are you? Uh, I do have a question. Right, Actually, sure. it's a question from someone on, twi on, on Twitter about the attendance problems in uh, Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, why do, have they had such uh, problems with the attendance in Tampa Bay and getting a new ballpark? Yeah, and so I did that for, I said, as soon as somebody tells me to pull it off, I'm going to pull it off, you know. But I, as long as we're going to let you do it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I wrote something one day, and I was writing about sacrifice bunts. And of course, it was, when you're talking about sacrifice bunts, you got to talk about the Tampa Bay Rays. I don't really know what my connection was. But I said, if you look at the MLB game day, you'll see their picture. The Tropicana Park is incorrect. It has people in it. And so, some guy from Tampa Bay saw that, he gets all mad at me and that. He said, you can't go, you're posting your own stuff on Reddit. Blah, 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 and said, not anymore, peace. And so, that was the end of them being able to see my stuff on Reddit. What is the problem? I really don't know, man. Because even when they had winning teams, they just, I mean, they, they at least showed the capacity to draw that first year. If you can get to 30,000, you at least have the capacity to do something, but they were horrible for these years. And then they start playing good baseball here with a really young, exciting team, Evan Longoria. Chris Archer wasn't long in yet. I mean, you got a team here, 97 and 66, 97 wins, and there they can only get to 20,000. I can, but the thing is, if I put up the Miami slide, it's going to look exactly the same. For whatever reason, there just is an interest in us. When I say talk going down to 2014, sidearm Tampa Bay is so long my end. Would it have anything to do with the fact that uh, we're spring training down there? Yeah, it's just a game. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I have a problem with that. I, I like that. I, I, I never give them that thought. I would say that the, the, uh, the population was generally from another city. Yeah. When uh, I know that when the Yankees are there, the is there, the place is so you know, pretty close to sell. Well, and plus, it's a small base. We only talk about two million or so. And so they're getting you know, roughly 50%, which it, you really, realistically can't have for much more than that. There are six teams that can sell out these days Cubs, Cardinals, Dodgers, Yankees, uh, Red Sox. And another one that I just discovered recently that I guess I should have known this. This one. Now, Grant, a whole lot of red right there. That's been good. <coughs> Brand new stadium that dramatically 
I've never been to Candle Stick, but what I understand is I'm not missing anything. And so you come from a place that's seen 60,000 people down to one, which is most modern stadiums these days, they realize 40 is the magic number. Right. My question is, have you looked statistically, for example, with the Dodgers? Mm -hmm. Well, how does the attendance change when the Cubs come in, or the Mets? Because everyone in LA is from somewhere else, also. Right. It's there. Because um, I know when I was there, the Cubs. Could, it's there. I grew up there. It's there. I was going to do that. I just grabbed some NFL attendance data over the last week or so, and I wanted to see. I was looking for a Cubs well, doesn't make a change effect. Well, it doesn't exist because they just come to they come to the game. Period. Now there is a visiting team of that. I mean, you will in LA. Chances are, if I were to fly out there, I would see a spike for Cubs versus say, I don't want to say Diamondbacks, just say Phillies. I, I bet you I'm going to have more for Cubs for Phillies. I'm going to have more for maybe Mets this year because they were better. I suspect you're correct. Yeah, I mean, I was born here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Was forced to grow up at Dodger Stadium, <laughs> and always. And you had to listen to the Scully. <laughs> no, that I enjoy. <laughs> Literally, every time the Dodgers in, the Mets were in, any Eastern team, the attendance was up with all those hats. Yep. And the, we're the ones who didn't leave yeah, as the subject starts to get on the freeway yeah. because we wanted to see the end of the game. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, National League of America, we used to call it. That's probably called it. 
Stadiums that were in rough areas, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Stadiums at that point that were 40, 50 years old, hey, they got a better offer. I mean, they weren't drawing. They just, it wasn't happening. And the Yankees weren't doing really much better either. Do the graphs show the effect of night baseball on Not really. I'd like to see it. Uh, that's, right. Uh, that's, right. that's, that's part of it. There. But that's part of it. Because, I, I, yeah, you can see it. I don't know if I can say it. Maybe say it was built for Sunday. Probably. But if you ever watch the Sox game, it's been a while, like a year and a half, and then one of the athletes. So I'm going to ask you, in the 40s, Sox are playing 40s. If you guys have ever watched the White House, Indians gave Ed Cleveland during the drug guy. How close are your microphones to the drug guy? Very close or not? Okay. They're not, they're not right next to you. Okay. My point being, if you watch the Sox Cleveland game, you can hear a drum guy when the camera's not on you. They all of a sudden, Hawk Harrelson stops talking for five minutes. And then all of you can hear this. I go, whoa. They're nowhere near this guy. So Cleveland is no one. I'll show you that. And I've got to wrap up. I 
This is what you're talking about. Yeah, buddy. Those mid seventies Cleveland teams were horrible. And they're playing in a stadium built for seventy thousand, and they're getting five or six. That's a great time. <laughs> What hey. year is the uh, furthest to the left? Pardon? On your, uh, oh, 1920. 1920. So, so we've got Lee Park. Yeah. And then the Lee spike Park, was when they were using Park. Park. And, uh, Municipal Stadium, a couple of years. Uh, I don't quite understand why they did that. I just know what they did. And then this became Municipal Stadium the whole time, so I'm trying to ride around there. Yeah. Well, if you have any other questions, please feel free to like and comment. Thank you.